My passion is music. It pretty much encompasses everything that I do. Always played sports. Always been a healthy kid. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, you don't see it coming, and then it happens, and life just throws a curveball at you. He took his own life back. He took control of the situation and didn't let the situation control him. And that says a lot about Jordan. It was the first week of two days at the very end of practice. It was a normal drill where we were doing a full 11 on 11 contact. I was playing safety, came in, made a tackle. And then he rolls over and then he, he's on a knee and then he says to me, coach, I felt a little dizzy. I got up and everything was spinning. Um, ears were ringing like crazy. And so I walked over to our trainers and I literally felt like everything was just falling. Once I got him inside, I called his parents and I said, I'm not really sure what's wrong with Jordan, but I've called Bubba Wilson, our trainer. It got really, really scary when I couldn't feel my left side. When I walk in, he's got a droop on the, on the left side of his face. And so I think, stroke. And so I, I go through everything. His neck is fine. His extremities are fine. This just doesn't add up. He knew by looking and just his assessment that it was more than what any of the rest of us could see. We ended up making the decision to go to Memorial Hermann. I was the attending on the stroke service that particular week. Dr. Butler, who was the pediatric neurologist on service, um, asked for a consult. In the setting of trauma, high impact sport with football, I'm automatically thinking that trauma is related. And so I'm looking for a blood vessel injury, a tear in the blood vessel wall. Jordan's blood vessels looked great. So then I go to the next thing on my list and I'm looking for a blood clot. And a young person, those blood clots typically come from the heart or from genetic causes where the blood will form clots on its own. How does that even happen? How does a 16 year old have a stroke? You see stories on the news and, and there's a high school athlete who, who dies during a practice or a game and it always seems like it says, you know, a previously undiagnosed heart condition. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is how it happens. I can't imagine being a parent and seeing your child go through something and, and you're helpless in that fashion. I am an adult physician. It's not common for me to be called to see an acute case in a pediatric patient. What that triggers inside of me is just a different set of emotions. A child not being able to move one side of their body, just it's not right and we need to fix it. In Jordan's case, he had a connection across the chambers of the heart that could potentially provide a mechanism for a blood clot to travel to the brain. They did an echocardiogram and found out that he had a uh, hole in his heart that was the cause of the stroke. When we found out it was the heart, it was like, again, it was great to, to know what it was, but we're not through this yet. We'll wait a little time for him to get over the stroke symptoms, we'll do the surgery, and, and he should be you know, better than new. Basically what we do is put a catheter, which is a thin, long, flexible tube, into the femoral vein and through the groin area, and then go across the defect and we can do what's called angiograms and then demonstrate the hole. We had so many specialists visit and spend time with Jordan. And I mean, you just knew that you were in the presence of best in class care. I knew that football was gonna be ripped away from me, but music was my life. And so this music therapist comes in with her guitar. I prop myself up and uh, I played a G chord that just that gave me a whole new rejuvenation, like, yes, I'm gonna get through this, I can still play. They took a little bit of time, but then they allowed me to play soccer. I still remember the first day that I put on my cleats and got back out there. That is really when it felt like, okay, the road to recovery has finally hit full speed. You know, every nurse who did the red-eye shifts, every doctor that came in there and 
did all the tests on me. I don't even know how to put it into words how much um, I'm thankful for them. The sooner the patient begins their treatment for stroke, the better the chances there are for a good outcome. The fact that someone thought a stroke is critically important and was very important in getting Jordan to the right place at the right time. I'm glad his mother was able to respond, and more than anything else, they didn't have to wait in the ER. He was able to make a phone call. There were people who were able to see him. Having the doctors be so positive and having the doctors um, caring for me, putting their own life aside for a second. We're just so, so blessed to have access to that kind of support. Just being able to participate in figuring out what the problem was and to decrease his risk of having another problem like this is very gratifying. It happened nine months ago, and uh, in that time, I have been able to pour into so many people saying, like, no matter what curveball gets thrown at your life, and you're saying, why? And you're just questioning everything. If the right people are around you, and, and you're with the ones who love and care about you, everything's going to be okay. My faith and Memorial Hermann gave.